To understand quantum mechanics, we have to first understand how time is being created. In quantum atom theory, each individual atom of our universe creates time and space in a very simple process using photons of light and electrons. In this diagram of an atom, a photon expands through space as a wave particle function of light. When it makes contact with the electrons on the surface of an atom, the wave function will collapse into a new photon particle and into a new moment in time and space. There will be a quantum leap of energy creating a wave particle function of future possibilities. In this way, two-dimensional space on the surface of the atom expands into three-dimensional space-time. This is a continuous process within our universe that Einstein called stimulated emissions that creates a chain reaction of photon-electron couplings. In quantum atom theory, this process also creates a time continuum, or arrow of time. Time only moves forward because the probability of the wave function only works one way. We always know the position and momentum of a quantum particle in the past. Any object that comes in contact with the particle wave function will collapse it, but because the observer can choose when and where to collapse the wave function, we have free will to create our own future. The wave particle duality of light, or electromagnetic radiation, is continuously creating a blank canvas for the observer that she or he can participate in. This is what Socrates called a sea of beauty. In this oil painting of a geisha girl walking through sunlight, the wave particle duality of the light will collapse as she walks through the rays of light. She will collapse the wave function into moments of time and space, creating her own space-time. The best way to see this happen directly with light is in the two-slit experiment. The light will expand in all possible directions as a wave particle function. When it reaches the screen with the two slits, the photon will react with electrons of the screen. This will collapse the wave particle duality of the light, creating new moments in time and new quantum particles in space. The part of the wave that does not come in contact with the screen will expand in all possible routes going through both slits. When this wave particle function comes in contact with the screen, it will collapse, creating moments of time and quantum particles in the shape of an interference pattern. When the observer tries to determine which slit the photon passes through, the interference pattern collapses. This is because to observe the photon, we have to create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing the wave function creating a new moment in time and a new particle in space. Just like in Newton's first law of motion, the interference pattern will continue to maintain its state unless acted upon by an external force. The only problem is the external force can only see one moment of infinity. However insane this theory might sound, it can explain the paradoxes and weirdness of quantum mechanics. We have entanglement because light moves through space, but not time, as a wave particle function. The polarization of two photons will be set at the creation of its own expanding quantum particle wave function. This will remain the same however great the distance between them becomes, because when their wave particle function collapses, it will represent the same moment in time for both photons. We have a measurement problem, or uncertainty principle, because the quantum particle will only have a position in time and space if the wave particle function collapses. If the observer does not collapse the wave particle function into a moment of time, the quantum particle will only have the momentum of its own wave particle function. At a fundamental quantum level, the observer is the observed within his or her own created space-time. Therefore, the more accurately we know the position of a quantum particle, the less certain we are of its momentum. And if we know its momentum very accurately, then we can't be quite sure of where it is.
This is because to observe the quantum particle, we create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing the particle wave function into a moment of time and space that is part of the observer's own created space-time. This can explain what the observer actually sees. In this diagram, a laser beam is sent through a slit. The observer will then adjust the slit so less light can pass through it. The observer will see the beam get narrower and narrower as the slit is adjusted closer. But when the slit gets to the quantum level, the light will start expanding into a quantum particle wave function. When this wave function comes in contact with an object or observer, it will collapse into a new moment of time and space. In this way, creation is being created continuously. This can also explain why light is so beautiful when it strikes an object. It is because we are looking at a moment of pure creation of time and space. Because this is a continuous process, at the same speed that light moves, the expanding wave function of light between the atoms will always be a universal constant, independent of the motion of the source. In this theory, there is no absolute or universal time because atoms create their own time relative to their position and momentum. This fits with Einstein's theory special relativity. When there is a photon electron coupling, there is a delay factor. This is why light travels slower through water and glass. The greater the mass or energy of an object, the larger or more rapid the particle wave function collapse. This will increase the number of photon-electron couplings, increasing the delay factor, and time will slow down relative to an observer in the object's own created space-time or reference frame. The individual observer is the only true reference frame because they are creating their own time and space relative to their position and momentum. In quantum atom theory, infinity is not a mathematical paradox but an actual reality of our universe. Because the wave function collapses into moments in time and also quantum particles, we have the infinity of time and space. In this diagram of an atom, surrounded by photon-electron couplings, feedback from other atoms will create sets of infinities. The reason why we can always divide infinity into sets of infinities is because of the continuous process of the wave particle function collapsing into new quantum particles. Each set of infinities will be a set of fractional self-similarities, creating their own infinity of time and space. This can explain why there is no centre or outer limit to our universe. There can be no centre or outer limit to infinity. Because of this, our universe is a set of infinities within infinity, a time within a space-time, a square within a square, a rhyme within a rhyme. Each fractional self-similarity will be governed by the law of the conservation of energy. In an isolated system, the total amount of energy remains constant and cannot be created or destroyed, although it may change form. This theory is very simple, but I think it is also very beautiful. In this theory we have free will to create our own reality within the dynamically evolving universe of Einstein, and quantum mechanics and classical mechanics of Newton are united.